go to presidential historian Doug Weed who joins us right now to talk about uh, Senator McCain. And, uh, you know, just in listening to Hillary's report, that was vintage John McCain in that letter that was read to us in the last hour by family spokesman Rick Davis. Um, now that you've had a, f a few days at least to think about this, have you been able to um, at least uh, have a place or find a place for Senator uh, John McCain in the history of the United States Senate, where how he'll Boy. be remembered? <laughs> Connell, it doesn't take a few days. <laughs> yeah, no. It just takes a few seconds. Uh, John McCain is one of the greatest figures in American history. He's certainly uh, a giant in the U.S. Senate. He'll be remembered uh, with uh, Robert Taft and Everett Dirksen, with uh, Daniel Webster and Henry Clay as one of the greatest senators in American history, a giant. What about how that body will change without him um, being there? I suppose it was already changing for for some time, but now with the death of Senator McCain, what does it do to the Senate? Yeah, they lose a man of great integrity, and there's a, a wonderful lesson to learn from the life of John McCain. A lot of people forget he not over overcame not only the Hanoi Hilton and the, the pain that he suffered there, but in 1989, the Keaton Five, Keating mm -hmm. went to prison. It was a savings and loan scandal. The five U.S. senators, their careers were cut short, but one of those senators was John McCain, right. and he tediously laboriously worked his way back to integrity until today now at his passing he's seen as the epitome of honesty the McCain Feingold uh, Act which reformed corruption in campaign financing the straight talk express the name of his bus so he's going to be missed as a moral compass for the US Senate but he's a wonderful lesson for me and for anybody hmm. that you can make mistakes in life right. and you can come back it's work, but you can come back. Doesn't from it. always mean the end of your uh, of your career or your life in public service. No, it's a good point. Now, uh, thoughts on a successor to Senator McCain, at least in the short term. I know Governor Ducey in in Arizona will be making that appointment, uh, I believe, after the funeral. And um, it was it was said or it was reported that Senator McCain himself. Uh, would have liked an Hispanic woman to be his successor if he could pick. That's what was said last hour. I mean, there's been speculation maybe even his widow, uh, Cindy, might be appointed. I don't know if that'll happen. But don't you think there'll be pressure on the governor there to go with someone maybe who supports the president and maybe we get a U.S. Senate that's going farther and farther to each side as opposed to having more people in the middle like uh, Senator McCain was, at least on some issues? <laughs> Boy, I think you're right. Yeah. I think Arizona politics is a bit of a snake pit right now. Huh. And it's interesting to contrast it with McCain, who's passing, because in 2000, you remember in the South Carolina primary, George Bush's campaign yeah. accused him of being a traitor, of being the father of an, a black child. McCain just wouldn't take it. It was mm -hmm. like a kick in the stomach. And he now look who one of the speakers is going to be apparently at his funeral. <laughs> his, uh, That's former exactly president, right. Uh, All Bush. forgiven. All forgiven. Let you go, Doug. I know I, from interviewing you, I believe you've been fairly supportive of, uh, of President Trump since he's been in, in office. Any thoughts, though, on how he's handled this? Among other things, he's been asked about Senator McCain today at least three times, and he's ignored the questions each time and um, was criticized for his tweet, was criticized for raising the flag to full staff earlier than it's been raised and uh, when we've had similar deaths in the past. What do you make of the way the president's handled this? Yeah, well, I would like him, of course, to just uh, laud Senator McCain and give him his due uh, when you actually replay the exact history of that moment. It was John McCain who fired first, understandably so, but 10,000 Arizonans showed up to Donald Trump when he went out there after Kate Steinle's murder, and uh, John McCain was embarrassed by it. He was pulling 200 at his town halls, so he called them crazies, and that's when Donald Trump retaliated and called uh, said, I like heroes who weren't captured. But that was a real mistake. John McCain is a hero. He was given an opportunity to leave the Hanoi Hilton because his father was a naval commander during right. the Vietnam he War, and he didn't take it. Right. So he's a real hero, no doubt. And the president's been given an opportunity to speak about that. Uh Heroism a number of times today, and he's passed that up each and every time. Doug, good to see you, as always, and thank you for your reflections Thanks, today. Thanks, Connell.